Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to be playing around with Unreal Engine 5. That's right, it's been long teased and talked about, but it's finally ready for average people like you and me. Now for those of you who aren't in the know, Unreal Engine is Epic Games' video game creation tool. They bake lighting, physics, particle effects, all of that is baked right into the software so that you can use it and create video games quickly, easily, cheaply. If you're looking at competitors, we've played with Unity in the past. That's probably the biggest competitor in this space. Uh, they both allow you to start building 3D video games very, very quickly. Unreal Engine tends to be a little more photorealistic. It tends to be a little more sophisticated. Uh, traditionally. Now, I'm going to be the first to admit I haven't played around with any of the previous Unreal engines. I come from Unity and even that very little bit. But we've played around in the past uh, creating a VR experience in Unity. And what I wanted to do is look at whether we can do the same thing in Unreal Engine 5. Now we're going to take this step by step. This is brand new engine. I'm going to start with, in this video, just installing it and setting up the amazing city sample that they have released for free for you to use as a tutorial, as a template, to take a look at what UE5 is able to do. do. Now, UE5 really released with a bang. They did a keynote where they're talking about future games, the next Witcher, the next... Uh, Tomb Raider, a bunch of games, Fortnite's already on the new engine. Those are going to be major, major AAA titles, and you know that UE5 is going to be a huge deal when all of these heavy hitters are moving in. What was really impressive is a game demo that was released a little while ago for the Matrix movie, and what they did was just recreate part of a cityscape in real photorealism. If you take a look at these uh, images in game, you know, it looks very, very impressive. And it's available for you to download. So what we're going to do is just download Unreal Engine, install it, and, and play around with the city sound. And then from there, in the following weeks, we'll play around a little bit deeper. How do we put new assets in there? How do we do cool stuff with it? Maybe, if it's possible, how do we export it to VR? I can't imagine this being able to fit in an Oculus Quest, but maybe something quite simple. And we'll just play around with the engine. So, let's get started. Okay, that took a while. Different shirt, different day. But um, 20 gigs later, you have the engine downloaded and another 100 gigs later to get the city sample. Now, despite the fact that there was a long download installation time, it was actually quite straightforward. You download the Epic Games Launcher. This is the same one as if you were downloading video games just off the shelf. Uh, you just go into the Unreal Engine tab and you you uh, pick the engine version you want to download and get started. Super simple, but the other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, while I was installing it, I forgot that Unreal Engine has this meta-human thing. And let me see if I can edit it so you guys can see. Yes, there we go. I just thought this was super cool, and we might take a look at it in more detail, but you can just start creating and editing people uh, quite significantly. Let's make them look younger with a little less texture. Um, I don't know what contrast is, but a little less rough on the skin. Uh, we can add some freckles. You know, the, this is uh, pretty amazing and you can start um you can really make 
realistic looking humans and you can export them so that you can use them in Unreal Engine. So uh, if you had the inclination, I think this is a really powerful tool. You can sculpt yourself in in this tool or very realistic people for your product. Anyways, let's start launching. I haven't done this yet, so I don't know what the process is. All I've done is double click, wait for it to download, wait for it to verify, install. Um, but what does this mean? Prerequisites. Uh, let's launch. I can hear my computer spinning, so this it might be just launching and doing the first time run through, or it could be that's very demanding. So quite a bit of time has passed. Uh, I was able to launch this and fiddle with a couple different maps. If you take a look at the city sample and you can see the content drawer, which is at the bottom right here, uh, you pull it up and you'll see that there are all sorts of different maps you can take a look at. You go into the general maps page, you'll see the big city level. This is the really impressive matrix um, demo city that you can play around with. And presumably everyone is just uh, very impressed over. But uh, all over, there are other maps that you can play around with. In AI, for example, there is a crowd map in which you uh, can look at an intersection specifically does something about vehicles. I'm currently looking at the buildings map, and you can see that they use some of the blurry backgrounds, uh, partly blurry because of my crappy computer, but uh, some of the background that um, that you it isn't quite created all in 3D, but it's part of the images um, that, that form the backdrop. So, for example, if you build a video game, what you want to do is have very close up the models that you'd be using. Um, and in the background, you might have very blurry skies, uh, depending on your generation, you know, uh, might have mountains and so on uh, to form the backdrop. And it doesn't have to be quite as detailed. Now, um, I am... I picked this one because it's the only one that didn't quite cause my computer to slow down to a crawl. Um, but you can see the models of the various buildings, and I'm zooming in. Let's see how far, close I can get into it. But um, these would be the various buildings that form part of the map and they present it I think on some sort of surface um, with this background that doesn't quite make sense. These now look like models rather than actual buildings. But if you scale it up, uh, there is enough detail on these to, to look really really good. And I'm just doing a very poor job of zooming in right now very slowly. Now, the other things that you might want to do is just grab one of these and look at all the details. And if you've played around with, um, I want to say Oculus, but that's not the one, uh, Unity, uh, you'd be able to recognize a lot of these things. Uh, every object 
that you select and place onto onto the screen, you can transform it uh, in a very physical way. And these would be very familiar to anyone uh, that does a bit of 3D modeling. It is a matter of where you are placing it, what the scale is, um, where uh, how you want to stretch it. So if we change some of these, let's let's just change the scale to 2.0, for example. You should have double the whatever the red coordinate is. This looks to be the uh, let's see, y is up and down. This might be the z coordinate. Uh, I am not seeing that, so I might need to click enter. Let's let's make it a bit even more exactly. There we go. Yeah, so um the depth of the object has changed. And if we go back to point zero where it's supposed to be, where everything is equal in scale, and click enter, you'll see this is how the building should look like. Now, I, I should warn you, you, you see this red text here. Uh, my computer isn't exactly the worst one on the market. It's actually fairly decent, but it's not top of the line. Um, I'm running a 980 graphics card and a 3600 uh, Ryzen model. And it's struggling. It really is struggling. So we might want to play around with another demo later on. Um, to actually get something together, but it's it's struggling all the way through. Every time I hit that play button to actually play the C, uh, it, it 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 crashes. So uh, I'm not gonna do that. But we're gonna look at some of these models uh, in greater detail. Take a look at this one, okay? Um. These kind of show you the tricks, the shortcuts that um, 3D modelers and, and designers do. Um, when you're looking at building this large, really, you're probably looking, you're probably a character down here on the floor and looking up at the building. So you really don't need a ceiling, you don't need these terraces because you're not going to see that. The angle prevents you from doing so. Uh, similarly, this building isn't, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to walk into it. So all of the internal structures are pointless. Now, if you're looking at these going, it's nice, but it's not that impressive. It's because you're not taking advantage of all the features that, uh, come along with Unreal Engine. So for example, all these windows, they look kind of dead when you zoom in like this because they're all just these single compartments. But one of the really cool things when you start scaling up um, and start really putting in the effects is you would put different images behind all of this and you would put some sort of parallax effect. So as you move, the image uh, will shuffle along to, to match your camera to really give the illusion of different rooms, different lighting conditions, uh, that there's depth in those rooms, that it it, uh, it interacts with you. But um, the basics of this model is really, I mean, it, it looks great and a lot of work. Maybe not this one, but I love these kind of old buildings. There's just a lot of architectural elements at the top and bottom. Um, all of that is work, but uh, it it looks a lot less impressive than when we switch over. Now, um, what I wanted to take a look at is the other aspects of it. You see, when you have a game engine, you have things like built-in physics. So right off here, you get the option of collision. What happens when objects collide? Um, presumably, you can set different values, put different scripts. I don't really see it. Uh, rendering, streaming, and this is all related to, let's, let's select this one. 
streaming, rendering, physics, miscellaneous, how you load this. Uh, what is LOD? And here, okay, so uh, another kind of built-in feature can be damage, initial lifespan, so how long these things last. And general, okay. uh, oh, if we see all, we see everything here. Okay, that's not a ton of items, but let's see what else is here. These, all right, so each of these are buildings that we were looking at. Um, but when you go through a scene, it's not just a stack of these gray lifeless buildings. Uh, you have the ground, you have light, you have the sky sphere, so uh, a little dome on top of your entire project, or a sphere all around it that has clouds, that has uh, the blue of the sky, um, or, or nighttime sky, darker gray. Uh, you have sunlight, so a light source that, that is meant to, to mimic the sun. Um, I don't know what this post-process volume is, but let's see down here. Okay, so there aren't, there aren't a ton of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to reload that gigantic level. Or rather, actually, yeah, what I'm going to do is go back and go to the Rocket Maps browser here and open up the small city level. And so this is going to take a while. It took five minutes for me to load it last time. But you got to keep in mind, I'm not running the latest hardware in the world. And as a uh, solution for my very small capacity SSD, this is 100 gigs worth of content. I threw this all into a hard drive. So that severely slows things down. Uh, I'm not going to save those changes, even though really um, nothing has changed, but uh, we'll be back very shortly. And we're back. Take a look at this. Uh, uh, when it's still kissing me, it looks extraordinarily good. And you can see again on the computer it is struggling. But if we look here, let's take that in. Okay, you see, this is probably one of those uh those models that we were looking at and they don't look so lifeless now because there are some rooms that have lights in them they have uh, different content if we were uh, and these 